What's up everyone? All right, well, we're gonna do 2022 year in review. We're gonna break down for you the ups, the downs, and everything in between for the 2022 trading year. So to give you the cliff notes, we'll start high level. 2022, it was my third best year of all time. I finished just over 1 million in gross profit. On the last trading day of the year, I looked at my PL and I saw I saw that I was sitting at $999,600 in profit. And I was like, I can't stop here. I'm gonna take that last trade. It's gonna put me over a million on the year. And I did it, finishing at $1 million and some change. So a million and you know $500, something like that. But in any case, a seven figure year before fees and commissions is a great year. And I'm happy with it. Now, what's interesting for those of you guys that have been tuning in for quite a while is that it was pretty much a full year of trading in a bear market. And yet I did better than I did in the bull market of 2018 or 2019. And why is that? You would think as a trader, uh, specifically a momentum day trader, that I would do better in a bull market than a bear market. And I think that that's probably typically going to be true but what it doesn't account for is my progression as a trader over these last four or five years. So in 2018 and 2019, I did the best that I could at that time in the bull market, but now I think I'm a little bit better than I was then. And so even though the market wasn't as strong, I was still able to do not only well, in fact, I did even better than I had done previously in a bull market. So that's, that's definitely a vote of confidence in the strategy and, and for those of you guys that um, you know tune in every day you, you know but for those that are maybe tuning in here for the first time uh, I am a momentum day trader so that means my whole strategy is to trade stocks that are moving and not just moving a little bit but I trade stocks that are moving pretty quickly I'm looking for trading the leading percentage gainer in the market every single day and my strategy is all around momentum buying high and selling higher so obviously a bear market where we don't have the same exaggerated moves that we would have during a bull market is gonna be a little bit harder. And I compensated for that by trading a little bit more aggressively with larger share size. So that meant even though I didn't get as big of a move with bigger share size, I could still make good profit on a smaller move. We'll talk about the details of this as we get into 2022 year in review. But for those that are curious, 99% of the stocks that I traded, I found right off my custom scanners. And of course, these are the scanners I've been developing over my career as a trader, and I have a development team that's been building them out for me. And I would like to give you guys the chance to check them out. So I'll put a link down below that'll give you a two-week trial. You just pay for the market data for two weeks, and you can use my scanners and see whether or not you like them. These are the scanners that I use to find momentum stocks, reversal stocks, halted stocks, and stocks that are the top gainers, high relative volume, moving quickly. So this is my source for idea generation. And you know, I think one of the things that you have to think about is what are the tools that you absolutely need as a trader? And one of the things that you need is a way to find really strong stocks each day. And so this simplifies that process for you. All right, so enough about the scanners. Let's get into breaking down 2022 year in review. It's a year that a lot of traders struggled with because of the bear market. They weren't accustomed to it. They never traded in a bear market before. So I think there's gonna be some really good insights that you're gonna gain from hearing about my 2022 trading year. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. And I wanna remind folks as always that my results are not typical and there's no guarantee you'll find success with you trade on your own you'll learn from me so make sure you take it slow i'm going to be talking a little bit about my profit in 2022 but I, the reason i share this with you you know there's two things so so number one i'm i think i'm one of the only traders out there that not only puts my broker statements on my website but I actually go through these metrics for you so you can see both my biggest winners, which are always great to talk about, but you can also see the biggest losers. I put it all out there. So I'm very transparent in my trading. And then number two, I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the person that you're learning from is actually credible. And the only way that you can know that is by actually seeing these numbers. So I don't put this out because I want you to think that it somehow implies that you'll be able to achieve something similar. I'm putting it out because many of you are interested. I'm transparent. I put it all on the table and I think that that's important. So, you know, that that's, that's my belief. Um, so why don't we look here? So this is where I finished the year. Um, I finished it 1,500,000. Uh, one dollar and 78 cents 
not a bad year. This was where we finished here for 2022. That gave me an average daily gain of $4,427, which is great. Uh, this is something I'm not super excited about. My average winning trade was 814, but my average losing trade was $987. So my average losers were actually a little bit bigger than my average winners. And that was over the course of 3,800 trades. Accuracy, 69%. That's eh, a little low. Uh, I, I prefer to be in the 70s, but you know, it, it, that's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Um, Average hold time, four minutes, four minutes for winners, four minutes for losers. This is about the same. I mean, we could look at, you know, I could go back. I could just take this out here for a second. Um, and we could look at a larger stretch of time. So this is $12 million of profit here uh, as five minutes, five minutes. So statistically, 69%. Uh, average winners, average losers. The, the biggest difference here. The accuracy is the same. The hold time is basically the same when we look at a larger period of time. What's a little different is that the average winners and losers um, were about half as big last year. They were smaller, right? That That's probably the biggest difference for uh, 2022. And I think that that's, you know, the fact, the fact is I didn't have uh, very many huge green trades. In fact, my biggest gain was uh, only 22,000. That was my single biggest uh, trade. You know, which is kind of cool in a way that I was able to make over a million dollars and the biggest winner was only 20000 It just goes to show that this profit is not from like one lucky trade or something like that. This was the culmination of thousands of trades over the course of the year. But my largest loss was a $43,000 loss. And this is one that I remember quite well. Um, we can look at this one just to get us started. So this was a, let's see, let's switch to the one minute chart. This was uh, a setup that was a little outside my um, probably typical strategy. This was a stock that, as you can see, hit a high of $16 and then sold off, halted down once, twice, three times, four times, five times, came back up and then halted down again and again and again. So You'll notice right here that I bought on those green candles. I got in right there on those two green candles and I added right here into what I thought was going to be a halt up, finally a reversal. And then boom, it flushed. It went from 940, 950, 945, 950, all the way down here, halted down. It went sideways for a second, then it went lower. And look what I did. I just kept adding. I got stubborn on this one. I really did. I added more. I added more, I added more, and then I finally cut my loss down here. This was a bad trade. Nothing about this was a, was a good, well, okay, so I'm giving myself a little bit of a hard time here. It was a great year, and I'm starting with a focus on a, a lose, my biggest loss of the year. Um, but, you know, of course, this stuff happens. The setup here was trying to buy the first candle to go green, and that can be a really good setup. That's a reversal setup. However, if it doesn't work right away, you have to cut your loss. And I did not do that. I got, I was stuck in the halt down. It halted and I wasn't able to sell. And then uh, I added to try to reduce my average. And I thought it was going to go. And then it just kept going lower. And I added a couple more times and then I just had to cut my loss. This is essentially the inverse of what a lot of short sellers do, which is shorting a strong stock. So as a stock is going up higher and higher and higher and higher, they're just adding, 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 and then finally blowing out for a huge loss. So I, I took the short seller strategy on this one uh, by just adding as something was going against me. And um, as many short sellers learn, uh, that's that can be a very dangerous strategy. Okay, so that was my worst trade of the year. Um, and the best trade, it's not even really worth looking at. It's not even that big of a winner. So why don't we look at um, an overview here in a little bit more detail. Um, we're going to do year and month. I want to show you my metrics and profit um, dispersed over the year. So I started the year with a smaller uh, month in January. January was kind of tough because it was sort of a rude awakening. I had a good start. And then look at this. These were a couple of really big red days in January. I went from being up over 100,000 on the month of January to being actually flat or even red on the month after these two red days. 
you know, that's eighty, ninety-five thousand dollars in losses. And I recouped a little bit on those last two days, three days, but January, that was not a smooth month. So that set the tone really for kind of the the year. I started really aggressive and then got knocked down hard. Rally back in February, good month, good month in March, good month in April, and then things cooled off in May. That's seasonal. Typically, I do the best in the fourth quarter and the first quarter. But what was surprising about 2022 was that August was my best month of the year and September was my second best month. That's not really um, seasonally what I usually I see. But what we had going on in August were IPOs on Chinese stocks. And so if we look at some of these um, Chinese stocks here, let's see. So we can look at um, HKD. Uh, actually, I'm going to pop this back in. Um, so we're going to look at HKD. HKD was um, was by far the one that was like the most insane. So HKD, let's see. Um, this one, it literally goes. Uh, you could see this chart if we if we zoom zoom out. I'm just going to close these, make a little bit of room. So HKD goes from an IPO of like I don't know ten dollars all the way up to two thousand eight six hundred dollars a share over twenty five hundred a share. This was insane. So this was a Chinese IPO, and we had it was like back to back to back to back crazy Chinese IPOs. In fact, the average Chinese IPO was returning uh, two thousand five hundred percent, which is wild. So that gave and this was um this was at the end of july and early august and then this sparked a round of momentum that carried us through august and september it was incredible so that was the time to step up to the plate now something that um i'll mention here is that i would not be surprised if 10 or maybe 15 days this year produce 30 to 50 percent of my profit for the whole year it's just a couple of really big days, like, you know, uh, uh, some good trades on something like HKD that can make your year uh, ultimately, which is why I always try to show up. Uh, so because I just never know, uh, you know, we go into February. I had two days right here where I made over 100 grand back to back 68,000 and 52,000. So like those two days right there, if I had taken a long weekend and missed those two days, that caught that right there, two days was 10 percent of my whole year. We go into March. March was a little bit more steady. I still had good profits, but you could see it was just sort of steady. April, again, May, June, and then coming into August. Uh, and for what's worth, in August, I, I had a couple of really good days, but I just I didn't have a single red day. It was just solid trading, and it adds up. So even without having you know a massive single winner, it was a really good uh, month. September was solid. I had only one red day, which was great. And we can actually look at this. And then, so I'll just finish here. October, I came in way below my goal of 100,000 for the month. And then November, I came in way below it again. And December wasn't much better than October. So Q4 was a major letdown for me. I was expecting to be 300,000 of profit, 100,000 a month. And I came in way short of that. So that was a little bit disappointing. Uh, but one of the things that, I would encourage you to think about is just the fact that you know the market is what it is you can only trade the very best you can and if the market is cold well you know trade the market you're in don't trade super aggr aggressively in a cold market be patient wait for better setups to come along don't force it and so i i took it slow i traded in the market i was in and I produced small profit, which, you know, relative to that market was, that was the best I could do. So anyways, it was kind of a slow finish uh, to the year, October, November, December. Uh, I want to look at, um, I want to do a comparison here. So we're going to compare for the year um, winners and losers. Okay, so we're going to see now uh, for this, oh, and I got to do a start date of, January 1st, 2022, 12, 31, 22, 
Okay. Um, all right, so let's see, generate report. All right, so winning and losing trades. So this is where I think it's kind of interesting. So I actually made 2.1 million last year, but I also lost 1.1 million, right? So it kind of, this is something that, especially for a break-even trader, and for those that didn't check out the episode, um, I can maybe link it at the end of this, or you could always search it on my channel. There's an episode, a uh, two-part episode called "Being I'm a break, Being a Break-Even Trader," and in that episode, I interview other traders, and we're talking about the psychology of being break-even. Because what happens for so many traders is that when you first get started, maybe you have a little bit of beginner's luck and you make a little bit of money, but pretty early on most beginners, if they are like me, they start losing money, right? And it's not until you first stop the bleeding and sort of start going sideways that you'll eventually, if you stick with it long enough and you develop a strategy and you have the discipline to follow your rules, you'll start pulling away. And so this phase of being a break-even trader is an interesting phase in your career. It can be, for some traders, a phase that can last for just months. Others, it could be years of being a break-even trader. But during that process of being a break-even trader, you're making money and then you give it back and you make money and you give it back. And so one of the goals during that period is to try to learn how to lose a little bit less, how to separate the losses, how to you know have more time in between these big red days, how to gain a better sense of when it's time to shut it down. So... Um, the thing that I wanted to also look at and sh show you is that my average cents per share is only 10 cents a profit. As a momentum trader, spe and specifically a breakout trader, these are small gains. Uh, take 5,000 shares, 10 cents is 500 bucks. Get in, do it again, get in, do it again, right? So, you know, 8,000 shares, 10 cents, it's $800 uh, roughly. So that would kind of add up there. And then the losing side, my average loss is about 14 cents. So that's why I have a slightly negative profit loss ratio. And the only reason that I make money despite a negative profit loss ratio is because my accuracy, if we go back over here, is 69%. So 69% accuracy is uh, is the reason that, I'm, that I make money. And by the way, uh, so I, I do wanna go over my fees and commissions for this year because they were substantial. So I traded, uh, I, I use a broker, as many of you know, where I pay a commission. So I pay a commission on every trade I take. Uh, for most traders, that commission is $2. I negotiate it down to $1. But that means I still paid uh, $37,702 in commissions based on pressing the buy or sell button 37,000 times in 2022. Then this, these are my ECN fees. These are your maker taker fees that you pay when you trade through a direct access uh, broker and you route your orders directly to the exchange, like to NASDAQ, EdgeX, ARCA, et cetera. And, and those added up to about 150,000, which put me at a um, net profit after fees and commissions of 812,000. And I'll pay uh, basically nothing in income tax on this because I chose this year to trade in a retirement account. Some of the profit that I made in 2020 and 2021, I made in a regular account, but then I decided after having made sort of enough to pay bills and things like that and save some, that I could focus then on trading in a uh, retirement account. So that's what I'm doing at this point. Uh, so it's a Roth IRA. That means it was, um, uh, there's no tax on the growth and there'll be no tax on the withdrawals, but I can't withdraw until I'm uh, 59 and a half years old, but that's okay. So anyways, um, so the um, so the reason that I elect to trade in a uh, direct access broker, there's a lot of, I, I could go on for a long time about this and I, I'll keep it kind of brief just because I've talked about it in other episodes and I really want to talk more just about the year in review here. But um, I believe, so there's sort of two issues. Number one, I've been trading with a direct access broker for, for basically the majority of my trading career. Um, early on, I used a retail broker and I didn't find it. I didn't find that I was very successful there and commissions were uh, higher at that time at brokers like E-Trade and Ameritrade. They were like seven, eight, nine, ten dollars $10 a trade. 
And the direct access brokers at that time were still like two, three dollars a trade. So they were a lot cheaper. So at that time it made sense. Uh, you paid the ECN fees, but you were still you were still saving money. And then of course, um, commission free trading came around. When it first started with Robinhood, didn't think much of that. You know, trading in a, on a mobile app, I didn't think that would work for day trading. Uh, but then when Schwab and E-Trade and Ameritrade and all these other brokers went for free commissions, I started to think about it, you know, well, wait a second, maybe I'm overpaying. So I did try trading with um, a couple of the uh, retail brokers and I did some videos about it. That was when they first came out with free commissions. And I thought that the execution speeds were slow and I didn't like my inability to create custom hotkeys. I love creating custom hotkeys for very specific situations. And I'll adjust them on the fly, just like you would adjust when you're skiing, you know, the wax on your skis and to the condition of the mountain. I'll adjust my hotkeys to the condition of the market I'm trading, both in the routes I'm using, whether I'm using dark pools or lit markets, um, the offsets I'm using. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with a direct access broker that you can't do with uh, some of these other brokers. Having said that, um, I also acknowledge the fact that um, probably the majority of uh, members or students that we have at Warrior Trading who have uh, made over a million dollars, did it with a, um, just a regular like TD Ameritrade broker. So I, I don't think that it's a requirement to use a broker that's direct access to trade my strategy or to trade similarly to me. But, uh, for me, I guess it's a combination of what I'm used to and, um, f feeling and believing that that flexibility is important, but ultimately I don't know for sure. So I, I do have a TD Ameritrade account and, you know, I, I'll trade in it sometimes, but uh, maybe specifically on a stock that's cheaper where commissions will be higher. But anyways, um, so so let's get back to, to this. So if you have questions about that, you can leave them, of course, down in the comments below. And I hope that those of you guys who are tuned in, if you enjoy this episode, you hit the thumbs up and I hope you're already subscribed to the channel. So in terms of my metrics here, performance by day of the week, I don't think there's anything really big to take away from this. I, I really don't think much of it. Um, if I clear this out, the met, the, the numbers are going to be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit different, but I, I really don't read too much into that. So, you know, sometimes doing a year in review, you'll see a pattern and it's like, okay, that's kind of interesting. I, I don't know exactly why that pattern, um, you know, was like that, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be like that next year. In terms of price and volume, um, distribution of profits was primarily between $2 and 20. So, you know, generally that's what I say I, I focus on, but I did make a hundred grand on stocks between 20 and 50, a little bit less on higher price stocks. Um, obviously traded more based on trading larger shares. That makes sense. Uh, made a bit more based on my in-trade price range which makes sense. Stocks that had very small ranges I lost money on. Those are often going to be like your cheaper stocks that just get range bound. Those ones are, can be tough to trade. Um, instrument here, I did the best as it turns out on Saidu, but none of these were like really exciting. Oh, I forgot about the energy stuff. So early in the year, we had um, a big move on a bunch of energy stocks. So we had INDO, uh, so let me back this up here. So this crazy move on INDO. We had PGY. Crazy move on PGY. We had HUDI. Uh, this was this was another big move. Although uh, this was actually, um, I think th this this wasn't an energy stock. It's just I just thought of it. Um, what else did we have? Let's see. Let me look here. Um, we had. ISPO, I don't think those were energy. IMPP, I think that might have been energy. IMPP. Yeah, look at that move. Wow. That was those were some big moves there. Um but nothing really Meg L, some recent IPO stuff, GNS, some good trade. I actually traded that one again today. Um it's up seven thousand on that one today. But none of this is really like 
you know, the, 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 it was uh, it wasn't like any one stock made the year for me. Um, it was just a lot of sort of slow and steady trading. Um, I did the best on stocks with more volume. More volume meant more liquidity so I could get in and out a little bit easier. And I did the best on stocks that had five times higher volume than their 50-day average. This is significant. So five times higher volume, uh, these are going to be stocks that most likely uh, came out with news and were gapping up. All right, so we may even be able to see, uh, yep, a substantial profit on stocks um, up more than uh, 10%. That makes sense. And a substantial profit on stocks that were opening at least up 2% as a gap. But most likely, this is if you move that up to plus 5% or plus 10%, it would still be pretty much the same allocation. The lower gappers usually are continuation stocks, so trading it on the second day. Um, although, usually... Um, okay, so this is performance by instruments prior day. So this shows you a little bit more of that distribution here where these are all continuation stocks. And then this is generally like fresh momentum. Um, so kind of, kind of interesting there. Um, although, yeah, I did, I did a little bit better in this spot here. So trading when the prior day, uh, performance by instruments prior day relative volume. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, it's, it's a little bit different. It's just a different way of looking at it. So if you had really high volume um, yesterday, then it's probably that the news came out yesterday, right? So that's when you'll get um, a little bit, uh, or if it's a continuation stock, a grinding stock that continues to move higher. Uh, let's see. And then predominantly trading um, in the morning, by the way. So trading between starting at 7 and done pretty much by 10 a.m. So from 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 1, 1 to 2, really didn't make substantial profit, but in fact gave back some profit with some 2 p.m. trades. That's, however, one of the trades in there is that $43,000 loss. That was an afternoon trade, the biggest loss of the year. So would it be a good rule of thumb to walk away at 10 a.m.? Well, you know, based on last year, uh, yes, that I would have I would have done better. And knowing when to quit is important because all of this continuing to trade, you're burning commissions, you're generating a lot of commissions, you're not generating as much profit, you're, you're wearing yourself out, you get frustrated, it can be all for nothing. So, you know, I, I think it makes, and this is one of the things with traveling and trading. So I'm, I'm traveling right now and uh, I'm in St. Martin. And so one of the things that I sort of said was that, you know, if I'm going to be, um, you know, on my traveling trading station, I really want to uh, trade for as little uh, time as possible. It's not my goal here to go on vacation <laughs> and sit in front of the computer all day long. Now, I am a little bit in front of the computer longer today than I had um, originally planned, uh, but I wanted to do this year in review for you guys. So in any case, um, that's fine. But so, yeah, I, I think trading the first two hours, first three hours is fine from 7 to 10, 7 to 11, and then pretty hard, pretty hard, probably a hard stop after 11 um, would make sense for most of this year, at least, uh, at least in current market conditions. Um, if that starts to change, then okay. Um, Win-loss expectation, I mean, uh, I happen, this is, this is a little bit of a tricky one because I made money whether the market was up or down for the most part, right? I mean... But that, but that's the market was down most days, uh, in just in terms of the way it performed last year. So, win loss expectation. Um, this is a, this is a, a helpful one that uh, maybe I should have shown sooner. So this is how I started the year, right? Um, I made um, I made some good money here. I'll zoom this in for you. Um, so was up about one hundred and six thousand. Went all the way back to flat. Wow. So that was my biggest drawdown. I went down uh, over a hundred thousand um, right here, hundred and one thousand, and I did rally back, but really slowly. And then I had those two really big days in February, and then it kind of slowed down again. And I had another drawdown right here. So I kind of pretty early on was like, "Hmm, this year's not feeling like the profits are as big as they were last year. Maybe I need to kind of dial it back." So I had a bigger drawdown in March, a little bit of a bigger one in April, and then a smaller one in May, a smaller one in June, 
and a slightly bigger one here in October. But you know that that was about it. Um, so I'm trying to keep drawdowns minimal right now, which means that I'm having periods where I'm trading smaller size. I'm only adding a little bit of profit. But what I'm doing is I'm keeping myself in the game. I'm showing up every single day. I'm ready to trade. I'm looking for opportunities. But if it's not hot, I'm, I'm cooling off really quickly. And I'm trying to be really good at knowing when to quit each day. Well, I'm not perfect at it. Uh, there's many of these days I, I trade a little too long. And it's always tough because, you know, some days you trade a little longer into the day and you end up, um, you know, you can, if you were maybe red, you make back the loss, finish green. But obviously there's other days where you just go further and further and further into the red. So I kind of finished Q4, as you can see, just sort of, it looks like I'm flatlining, although I did make money, um, like 50 grand or maybe more. But, you know, it is kind of just, nah, it's not super, it's not a lot for me at least. So anyways, it was a little bit of a slow finish, but, you know, I was going slow here and then look what happened in August and September. So at any time, things could start to open up. And what I want to prevent is at any time things going like this. Because for things to go like this, to have that kind of sell-off means I need to lose discipline. So as long as I can maintain my discipline, I can keep going relatively, you know, sideways where I, I make a little bit of profit. And then I'm just, you know, we get a nice big green day. I jump up a little bit, go sideways again a little bit, jump up again, a little bit more sideways. And that may be what 2023 is like. A lot of days that are, you know, kind of slow, uh, but occasionally um, some bigger opportunities. And, you know, so that's my, um, that, that's kind of my, my perspective. And in terms of setting goals for 2022 or 2023, um, I, I don't, I don't really have a hard goal. The fact is this entire year could be a bear market. Um, a lot of people are speculating that it's going to be strong maybe towards the second half of the year. We're going to have a really strong rally in the market. So we might have a, a more of a bull market that starts in the, the later part of the year. I don't know. And I'm totally out of that's, you know, the fact is what can I do? Right. I mean, it'll, it'll be what it is. If it ends up that we have a really big uh, bull market rally, then yeah, I could probably have a phenomenal year and a great second half of the year. If it ends up being a full year of a bear market, then it'll probably be a lot like last year. And I think I can do well. I don't think that I'll crush it if we're not seeing stocks going up 100, 200, 300%, you know, on a regular basis. So I think that one of the things that can be tough for traders is being able to mentally adapt to these ups and downs. You're going to have some years that are really hot and you're going to have some years that are really cold, you know, on that note. So I'm, I'm in St. Martin and the, uh, the, the taxi driver the other night, he was, he was telling me he's lived here for 32 years and, uh, he's been driving taxi the whole time. And in 2017, you know, they had this big hurricane here, hurricane Irma that just like leveled the whole Island. And he said that, um, and then, of course, they had the pandemic and so much of the economy here is tourism that the pandemic, you know, once again was like just shuts everything shuts down. And he said that what Irma taught them was that it's not always going to be sunny. There's going to be some times that are really bad and you have to be prepared. And that's what he learned. One of the things he learned from it. And so then when the pandemic came, he was better prepared because he knew that there would be you know some cloudy days some rainy days that would come eventually it's it's just only it's just the way it is so rather than it's like plan for, prepare for the worst and hope for the best I, I hope that we have a phenomenal year in 2023 if it's a slow year i know how to trade in that market and i know that i can do well enough that i can be happy with my with my trading so far in january i've had one red day uh it's you know i've just been grinding away small green day it's green 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 you know seven thousand today whatever just solid green days i don't have to crush it i just want to keep showing up and keep grinding and you know i i want to be mindful of the fact that uh i i never want to empower one trade to knock me out of this 
game or this career. This is a marathon, right? So this is something that you do for years and years and years and years. You never want one trading day, a loss on one trading day to, to end your career. Never, never. And so, of course, managing risk, keeping your account size relatively small. Uh, you know, these are all setting hard stops, max daily loss. These are all things that that I do during slower markets to limit my downside. So, of course, it does inherently limit the upside a little bit, but it's more important to limit my downside. That I can really control. And, you know, then when the market heats back up, I can always step back up to the plate. So I, I hope that some of you guys are able to think about that. Uh, for those that have been trading and you've been sticking with it for a long time, uh, there will be times where you might feel like, well, man, this market's just not worth it for me and it's okay to sit on the sidelines. But, you know, keep an eye on things because you never know when it may heat back up. And you may have a period like 2020, 2021, or whatever it is, where it really makes sense for you to show up every day and, and to be here. And then you might have a period like, you know, bear market where, it's okay to trade a little bit less and, you know, adjust accordingly. So anyways, um, I think this will um, wrap up my 2022 year in review. Again, there's a link down below for those of you guys that want to do a two-week trial. Um, you'd be able to use um, this platform here. It's the day trade. It, this is your day trade dashboard. It's custom software that um, I've designed um, between me and a team of developers, and I'm really happy with it. I use this every single day for finding stocks uh, that have the potential to make big moves. This is real time uh, market data. This is giving you like, basically it's radar for stocks moving. If a stock is moving, it's gonna hit on this. It's gonna, you could trigger it to set an audio alert for you. So you'll hear it make the noise. You can keep a really close eye on the market. And um, for active traders, I mean, this is what I'm using every day. I'm an, obviously an active trader. So I, I hope that um, some of you guys, uh, decide to start using day trade dash and do a two week trial with warrior trading Warrior trading members, of course, get access to this dashboard. And, um, here's to a, uh, a year where we have discipline. That's more, that's the most important discipline, the profits, they'll be what they are, but the process focus on the process ahead of the profits. Let this be a great year for discipline. All right. So uh, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. And reminder, of course, my results aren't typical and there's no guarantee that you'll find success with you. Trade with me or you'll learn on your own. So take it slow. Practice in a simulator before you put real money on the line. And don't try to blindly follow me or anyone else. Learn a strategy and have the discipline to follow the rules of that strategy. If you want the blueprint for the strategy, I trade every single day. Of course, I share that with uh, members at Warrior Trading. And you're welcome to, to learn that. It's a great starting point, but make sure you take it slow. All right. Thanks as always for tuning in and uh, I'll see you for the next episode.